I'm Cece Summers. After all the games that we have played up to this point, I feel like I deserve a nice, light-hearted, sweet game. And based off of the description, Sterile Desires seems to be that game. And no, I'm not worried. <laughs> what would I have to be worried about? What is your name? Thank you. You have a wonderful name, Cece. Thank you. It's It's been used by a lot of murderers. The voice continued to talk to you, but everything they said was a blur. You tried to focus, but your mind had strayed. Then huh? You look down on your lap to see your plate empty. You feel the warmth of the sofa and blankets comfort you, making you want to snuggle into the couch for eternity. Ah, uh, yes, I remember now. You wrap the fuzzy blanket around you more to where it looks as if you are in a cocoon. The wallpaper looks like eyeballs, and it is not comfortable. <laughs> Getting comfy this early? I mean, when's a better time to be comfy if not early in the morning or late at night? You hear Alfred, your boyfriend, say from in the kitchen, ooh, a boyfriend. I've decided to fuse my butt to this couch forever. Only the sound of snacks and food can make me stand, but even then? You think about it for a moment, but nah, I still wouldn't get up. You sure about that? Alfred says sarcastically. I do not give in that easily. Evening couch naps and pure laziness call my name. As you say that, the smell of food from the oven comes from the kitchen, making your mouth water. Not even truffles? Is he just making truffles? What kind of fancy bitch am I dating? <laughs> As you sit there, you tilt your head over the sofa to see your boyfriend in the kitchen cooking with that cheesy apron he always wore. <laughs> I'm not enjoying that noise. <laughs> I offer more blankets and can't promise warm cuddles along with the trade, but cuddles nonetheless. Alfred winks towards you, holding up the freshly baked truffles. Your trade is very tempting. I accept your bountiful trade. Alfred smiles and chuckles towards your words. <laughs> I'm somewhat of a good bargainer. You laugh at his words. Alfred always knows how to make you smile. It's nice, since the job you work doesn't bring any happy faces. Am I at the DMV? Whenever you are having a rough day, he always knows how to brighten your mood. Just like the home date and cooked meal he surprised you with after work today. The murders in this city have gotten out of proportion these recent years, and it was hard for you to keep up. It takes a toll on you, mentally and physically, and you are exhausted. Reoccurring nightmares of those cases haunt you. Oh, are we like a cop? Coming home to him is always a huge reliever from work. As time went on, you thought about quitting your gloomy job. You want to be happy. And maybe it's time to throw in the towel on the case. You can't keep holding on to the past. <laughs> Honey, you hear Alfred from the distance. He then walks up with baked goods on a beautiful silver tray for you alongside a bouquet. <laughs> dark chocolate truffles coming right up. I hate dark chocolate. <laughs> Alfred places the tray on the coffee table in front of the couch. That's when you decided to unwrap yourself quickly, to not let heat escape for him to hop in the blanket ball you tightly wrapped yourself in. Alfred cuddles you after you unwrap the blanket and you trap him in the blanket cocoon with you. Don't expect there to be leftovers. Alfred chuckles at your response. <laughs> I can always just make more. You extend your hand out of the blanket quickly to grab a truffle and pop it in your mouth. Alfred always knew how to bake food just right. I'm lucky that I got my personal chef. You say, leaning on his shoulder, giggling. <laughs> I can always teach you. Although... He laughs and looks back to the kitchen. Remember when I almost caught the whole apartment complex on fire? Yeah, probably not anytime soon at least. Maybe I'll stick to the microwave. Both of you laugh together and finish the truffles on the tray. He is always the hopeless romantic type going overboard for dates with gifts, flowers, and such. You did enjoy the meal, as he is a good cook after all. 
It was delish. <laughs> you say jokingly as you nudge his arm. <laughs> I made it with love. And sleeping pills, probably. He cooed jokingly. Snorting at his reply, both of you ended up laughing about it. Such a sweetheart. <laughs> Sweet like candy. Chuckling, you then look towards him. Thank you, though, Alfred. I appreciate it. <laughs> I'm glad. I know you had a rough day today. He smiles warmly towards you. <laughs> Hopefully it's not too overboard? It is. You look around to see the romantic candles lit, lights dim, rose petals all over the place, and a huge bouquet for you. Very. Before Alfred can say anything, you hold Alfred's hand, and he holds you in his arms, chuckling. It's perfect. I couldn't ask for anything better. He smiles at your response, and then gets up from the blanket bundle. Hmm? You question Alfred. <laughs> There's one more thing I wanted to show you, actually. Are you the murderer I've been chasing this whole time? Alfred then extends his hand out to you. Even though you're toasty in the blankets, you decide to emerge from your blanket cocoon. You smile and chuckle, curious what else he had planned for tonight. You then take his hand and sit up with his help. Alfred holds your hand and walks you to the balcony. The view is beautiful. The sun setting over the city is always your favorite view. <laughs> Beautiful, isn't it? Very. You smile at his response and lean on the rail, admiring the sky. <laughs> Cece? Yes. Alfred then looks towards you with a saddened expression. <laughs> Don't you think work is getting too much? You are quiet at his words, not sure how to respond. <laughs> I'm afraid that your job is affecting your mental health. <laughs> you... Always have nightmares now, and... I'm worried that these cases could be getting to you. Both of you stood in silence, looking at the sunset. I thought about throwing in the towel, I'll admit. Alfred then smiles weakly towards you. I'll support you nonetheless, but... I want to make sure you're okay, Cece. I... Trying to form words in your mouth, nothing came out. Tears form in your eyes as your cheeks grew puffy. I want them to rest in peace, and they won't ever get that if I give up now. Alfred wraps a hand around you and comforts you. You dig your head into his neck and embrace each other for a moment. Afterwards, he breaks the embrace slightly to look in your eyes and wipe your tears away. <laughs> I've always admired your dedication. Alfred smiles towards you. <laughs> I'll always fully support you. Either way, I want you to know I'm here for you. Thank you, Alfred. You smile and chuckle dryly. Gosh, I didn't expect emotions. <laughs> As you wipe your eyes, Alfred kisses your forehead. <laughs> your emotions are always valid, though it'll hurt more to bottle them up, honey. Alfred rubs your back as you're both still in an embrace. You're right. Nodding your head lightly, you lay your head on his chest. As you do this, he strokes your hair and hums a light tune to calm you. You always know what to do. Smiling at your words, he nods and gives you a glance of reassurance. <laughs> because I love you and cherish you. His words always knew how to warm your heart, making you chuckle lightly and smile to him. I love you too. Until you sell me on the black market. Looking back to Alfred, you see his cheeks flushed. It would be amazing if we could see this view together every day. I'd love that. You smile, looking over to Alfred. Alfred averts his eyes from you, his cheeks still flushed. Do... do you mean it? Of course I do, silly. You say as you try to lighten the mood again. Nudging his shoulder, you chuckle and scoot next to him on the railing. We've only been together, I don't know, six years? Am I about to be proposed to? <laughs> you say jokingly and laugh. He joins along with you. <laughs> you're right, you're right. <laughs> I'll always remember the day we met, even though I was very much a huge dork. 
I've always liked that about you, though. I thought it was cute. Nudging his shoulder lightly, you both chuckle. I always think what it'd be like if we never met. It'd be very boring without you. I'd throw hands if someone tried to change our fates like that. <laughs> Alfred laughs and leans on the railing. Throw hands? You bet, but I'm glad that I've met you. Although, we've really gotten old. How so? Used to be full of energy back then, and definitely never saw myself working this job back then. Yeah, I'll be honest, I never thought we'd be in the jobs we are now. Back then were different times. Way different times. Times change. I never thought I'd have such a laid-back job. Dude, I always thought you'd be a rock star or stay as a bartender from that sketchy bar that reeked of alcohol and cigars. You both laugh together as you reminisce over memories. Man, I've become an old man, haven't I? You are wearing a turtleneck sweater. Yes, but we've both changed. Not that I mind it, though. You smile at him and tilt your head as you lean on the railing. Alfred laughs as he turns to you with a relaxed but meaningful expression. He then extends his hand out to you on the railing. Afterwards, you gently place your hand in the palm of his. He then places his other hand over your hand in his palm gently. I couldn't see anyone else in my life. You're like my best friend and my love. You're the person I can count on. The love of my life. You're my one and only, my everything. I don't know what I'd do without you. See what I mean about a lighthearted game that's like a break from all of the horror and torture and killing? <laughs> Taken aback by his words, a bright blush spreads across your face. What are you planning, Alfred? You tilt your head to gaze at Alfred. That's when you see him pull something out of his pocket. Then? That majestic hair! Oh my god! Alfred gets on one knee in front of you. He opens the box in his hand, revealing a ring. You cover your mouth, surprised from his actions. Alfred! You smile towards him and tear up. <laughs> Cece, will you marry me? <gasps> yes, yes, a thousand times yes. <laughs> you already knew your decision. He's been your best friend through all of this. Through thick and thin, you could see yourself with him in the future. But my job, the case, <laughs> through thick and thin, it doesn't dissuade me. I'm here to support you and help you with every fleeting moment. Your eyes water as you hear his words, but you know your decision. Yes, yes, of course. Lunging to hug him, you wrap your arms around him and he does the same. Alfred tears up with you and embraces you. <laughs> You've made me the happiest man alive. I'm just waiting, I'm just waiting. Every moment that passes without something horrible happens is making me more and more, like, anxious. <laughs> And you've made me the happiest. After you say this, you both gaze into each other's eyes for a moment. Alfred's cheeks fluster hot red with his giddy smile and laugh. Alfred cups his hand around your cheek as you wrap your arms around his neck lightly and pull each other closer for a loving kiss under the sunset. A viper you are, slithering your way up from Beelzebub's lair to lay your cursed seed. You hear screams from afar, but you barely have the strength to move or even open your eyes. You feel as if your whole body is numb. Your frightened senses kick in, but with your weak state, you can't do anything about it but watch. Mustering up what strength you have, you force your eyelids open to see the horrid sight in front of you. Where am I? Oh no, is that Alfred on the table? Oh no! You say quietly with a weak voice, as it feels as if all energy has left your body. Hearing your words only and the faint sounds of the outside, you see glass encased around you in front of you. Alfred? You say in a hoarse whisper, scared to be right. 
You try to move your body, seeing Alfred tied up in front of you, but your body fails to do so. Your body falls limp against the silk bedding that you rest upon, unable to move much as your body feels weakened. Looking around at what you are encased in, you find that you are locked in a glass coffin. I don't know what you mean. We haven't done anything. Oh, but you are a tempter, tempting mankind to bite the forsaken apple once again. As they both are talking, you look down at your arm to see an IV with fluid pricked in your arm, the fluid in it flowing into your body. Seeing this, you keep trying to put strength in your other arm to flick the IV out. You try to put energy into lifting your arm, but you barely even raise your other arm on your side. As little movement it was, it was a good thing. It gave you little hope, but still hope nonetheless. You take any little goal at this point. You look down at your attire and find that the dress was something else. With the anesthetics and drugs that were in your system, it was hard to differentiate between what was the fabric of a straight jacket and the rotting flesh of another human being. What? (laughs) If it weren't for the sheer heaviness and smell of the dress, it wouldn't be as noticeable. Am I wearing a person as a dress? Kind of... Ugh. Seeing Alfred displayed in front of you, you are terrified of what would happen next, as these people dressed in surgical outfits beside Alfred didn't make you feel any better. I see through your charade. Even the devil was an angel in disguise. You see the unknown man hold up a hacksaw to Alfred's groin. Wait, no! The man then looks up to him slowly, tilting his head. Snakeskin regrows, does it not? Then what would be the point? Like, if you're under the assumption that he's evil and his little wing wang would grow back, then what's the point of even cutting off in the first place? It's not very righteous to torture people just for the sake of torturing them. Stop! Leave him alone! You scream before the man could push the hacksaw down onto Alfred. The man pauses and hands his weapon off to his accomplices behind him, afterwards turning towards you. Ah, you're awake, my doll. Oh, God. Not another person that wants to turn me into a living doll. Let her go. Hello. (laughs) Good morning. Good morning. From the lighting, you couldn't see his face well, but taken aback from him, you shudder. Don't kill him. Oh, but my dear, I won't kill him. Confused by the man's words, he continues. I won't give him that satisfaction. I will make him regret being born, to the point he'll want to crawl back to Beelzebub and face his punishment, then be with me. You widen your eyes, frightened by the man's words. Without knowing, tears stream down your cheeks. Oh, doll. Get your hands away from her! The man's gaze on you is unwavering. The silence cut through the thick atmosphere. He then places his hand back to his side. I don't usually play with my food, but this serpent I've been expecting for quite a while. The man tells you as he turns his head towards Alfred slightly, referring to him, then back to you. But you are the one I've been eagerly anticipating to finally meet. Very much more important than that serpent, my doll. Unable to form words from being terrified, all you can do is just listen. He seems to pick up on your emotions and tries to speak to you in a more loving manner. Did I frighten you? I'm awfully sorry. I didn't mean to. Who are you? The man seems a little disheartened by your words. We've met before, but I understand if it's been some time. I'm terribly sorry it took me this long, my doll. He tells you as he runs his fingertips across the glass directly in front of your face, as if he was cupping your cheek. But I am here now, my doll, and I won't give up on you. Who the fuck is this guy? Who are you? (laughs) I 
I know you must be eager like I am to consummate our love. I'm really not. I am really not. <laughs> but just wait a little longer, my doll. Enjoy the show in the meantime while I deal with this viper. Is this the serial killer that we've been chasing? Is that why? And I've got to say, our sanity's doing pretty well for being kidnapped, tied down, dressed in other people's rotting skin, watching our now fiancé getting his little wingling cut off. Now, let's proceed. Finally putting enough strength in your other arm, you knock out the IV. Even with knocking out the IV, the drug still remains in your system, making you still feel limp. The man gestures his hand towards his accomplice for his weapon back and is given it a moment later. Afterwards, he hovers the hacksaw over Alfred's groin. I don't want to see that. Mm, mm -mm, I don't want to see that. And we got to be thinking long haul, right? Like <laughs> our sanity is going to plummet if we watch this. And then we'll die. I'm, I mean, we're going to die no matter what, but <laughs> no, thank you. No, thanks. Thanks, but no, thanks. <laughs> you decide to shut your eyes, being unable to stomach the scene unfolding in front of you. Your wretched seed must be dealt with. We don't need any more nefarious monsters like you walking amongst us. Wait, no! <laughs> yeah. Alfred! You scream over and over again, with tears streaming down your cheeks as you hear him screaming bloody murder and pain. After the screaming stops, you open your eyes slowly, afraid of what scene will unfold in front of you. Seeing the man in the distance, you watch him sew up the area he removed. Seeing the man in the distance, you watch him sew up the area that he removed Alfred's genitals from. You hear Alfred scream in pain and flail around trying to escape, but it sadly is of no use. You breathe heavily, scared for Alfred, but still being unable to move heightens your fear. Afterwards, the man sews up the area and makes sure the bleeding stopped. Serpents speak with forked tongues. It is best that is seen taken care of. The man approaches Alfred with the hacksaw. Get away from me, you monster! I'm simply doing you a favor, the man says as he readjusts his gloves before standing beside Alfred once more. So, uh, again, this is a situation where it's like, I seem to be wanting to prolong my death <laughs> for as long as possible. So we just, we're not gonna, I don't wanna, I don't, you're good, you're good. You got this, you got this. I don't need to. I don't need to supervise this. <laughs> oh. Alfred tries to speak, but is unable to as the man had a tight grip on his tongue. Stop! I would say this wouldn't be painful, Mr. Ledger, but that would be a lie. Painful, but effective process, I would say. You see Alfred crying, and the man sewing up the vessels in the tongue. He just sawed off to stop the bleeding. Oh. Alfred cries in pain, trying to plead with the man, but all that comes out is a mouthful of blood. Ah, that is a great improvement indeed. Tears stream down your cheeks as all you can do is watch in horror at the scene in front of you. Oh, my doll. You see the man turn around and direct his attention towards you. I've been terribly rude, Cece. I apologize. Yes, you have. You have not been a very good host, sir. I don't know about you, but I expect basic hospitality, like offering me a drink, letting me keep my body parts on my body. You see the man open the door in a room and walk in. Afterwards, you see him return to you with a wheelchair. I got so caught up in the act that, that I totally dismissed your feelings, and I want to say, I'm sorry. 
Well, it's not like you can take it back, can ya? You hear Alfred trying to yell, but inaudible noises came instead. He then opens up the coffin and picks you up bridal style. You try to struggle, but with the medicine still in your system, you're unable to. The man then places you in the wheelchair, afterwards strapping down your arms and legs. I will be better. I promise I will work for our love. He then walks to the back of the wheelchair and gets a cloth out to put over your eyes. After he ties the blindfold on your head, the man proceeds to roll you down the hallway. I understand. Don't worry, my doll. I didn't take into account that this might have been a unruly sight for you. Unruly. Yep. Mm-hmm. And un- Yep. That's- That's the correct word for sure. He says as he pushes you in the wheelchair. While he's talking, you try to struggle to get free. Most of my works might not quite be to your tastes, but I will remove all of it from your sights. There we go, that's some of that hospitality I was talking about. <laughs> I want you to be comfortable here. Now, now, there's still a lot that needs to be cleansed, but it's something that can be done. Anything for you can be achieved, my doll. Why don't you go ahead and put my fiance's wingling and tongue back in his head? You then feel the wheelchair turn as if entering a room. You should feel more comfortable here, my doll. You hear his hand let go of the wheelchair and adjust the wheelchair to keep it in place. I must go finish dealing with the viper, but I will be back right after. You then feel the palm of the man's hand cup your cheek, his index finger lightly brushing the stray hairs away from your face. I know you must be scared being alone. But after this, I will be by your side for eternity. Yay! Yep, yay, that's, that's what I want. <laughs> now be good for me, my doll, and I'll treat you to a special surprise after I get back. Oh. Okay, well, <laughs> I think we're gonna struggle. <laughs> and again. And again. Oh! You crash to the ground with the wheelchair. Trying to move your hands, you are still securely fastened in the belts in the wheelchair. Damn it! You yell as you still try to struggle to get free. You're... her. Who's there? You ask, stiffening up, alert. The fuck are you doing? Don't talk to her. What? It's not like they're going anywhere. Just remember what happened to the last person and do your fucking work. I said, who are you? You yell to both of them. They were both quiet for a moment until one responded. We just work here. Of all the places that you could have worked, this, this is where you, this is, this is where you went. What is the interview process like for working with a serial killer? Like, <laughs> here's my resume. Here's all of the bodies that I've chopped up and disposed of. I do, a, I'm, I'm really discreet. I'm really discreet. I'm really quiet. I'm gonna help you get away with so much shit, man. Like, don't even worry. Like, don't even worry about it. <laughs> Are you a goddamn idiot? Do you want to lose your tongue? striking up conversation because everyone else has their head too far up their ass to actually hold a decent conversation. The man yells to the other person. Fine then. Don't come crawling to me when you get caught, you traitorous embarrassment. You hear the other person grunt, walking further away in the room. The tension was unsettling. What is this place? Afraid that's something I can't say. Can you help me then? I promise I won't tell. Just please, let me go. That'd get me in a lot of trouble. Why should I trust someone who will turn me in? Why would I turn you in? Before the person could respond, the person in the back laughed. Listen. You tell the unknown person trying to convince them. 
I will do whatever I can to help you from my standpoint. And how should I believe you? You ponder their question for a moment before responding. I won't look at your faces if you let me go. Promise. You hear them grumble and pace around the room for a moment before walking closer to you. Don't take off the blindfold or I'll hurt you. Man, they are not good at their jobs, are they? <laughs> you nod in compliance to them. The unknown person yanks you up by the shirt to stand up. Afterwards, they open the heavy metal door and throw you out, quickly slamming the door behind you. You take off your blindfold really quick and assess your surroundings. I gotta find Alfred. Is that just meat hooks full of torsos? So it seems like going left is going to take us into the little torso hanging room. Not a place I want to be. <laughs> so let's go right. As you're going to turn right, you see two people walking down the hall dressed in a similar fashion to the man and his accomplice from earlier. Too dangerous to go that way. You think to yourself as you back up to hide from the unknown people that lurk the hallways. Trying to see their faces, your vision is still too blurry, making you unable to identify or remember any certain facial features. Must be from the medicine. You ponder for a split moment, shaking your head. I need to think quick. So I guess straight? Then, because I don't want, I don't want to go to the torso hanging room. I really don't. <laughs> you proceed forward as both of the other directions aren't safe. After sneaking around the halls for a few minutes, you arrive back at the room you originally woke up in. Yay! You see Alfred still strapped down, but the man and his accomplice aren't there. The room is empty. Running into the room, you automatically run up to Alfred to help get the buckles off his limbs that restrain him. Alfred tries to speak, but it is unaudible. From his expression, he seems frightened at your footsteps. It's okay, it's just me. You whisper to him with a weak smile, walking in his eye view. After you do this, he calms down a little bit, but Alfred appears to still be very shaken up. After you remove Alfred's restraints, he slowly tries getting up, but is in excruciating pain. Alfred bit his lip hard enough to the point of making it bleed as he pushes himself to stand. You see in the corner Alfred's discarded clothing and go to grab them. After crawling to retrieve them, you move slowly over to Alfred to hand them to him. Afterwards, he weakly and slowly puts back his discarded clothing, still lying on the ground. Alfred, are you okay enough to run? Alfred tries to respond, but blood keeps pouring from his mouth. It's okay. You don't have to respond, just nod yes or no. Alfred cries from the pain and weakly nods his head. After, you wrap an arm around him as he does the same. You then help each other stand, balancing your weights. Oh, straight! <laughs> oh no! While you two are running, someone comes out from one of the rooms trying to stop you both. This makes both you and Alfred separate, running different directions. Uh, left. Oh no! Left was not correct. <laughs> okay, go straight. And then go right. Right was not correct. <laughs> go straight. Go straight again. The spikes impale you and Alfred, making you both stop in your tracks suddenly. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> okay. You slowly lose your vision and everything fades to black. Straight was not correct. There is no correct. We're just fucked. <laughs> okay, straight and then right. Left into the meat locker. Ugh. You sprint left and push objects that are in your path away. Trying to listen to where Alfred is, the person behind you chasing made it hard to figure out. As you sprint, you cut through an open cooler room filled with hanging, gutted bodies. 
Get back here, bitch. You push the hanging bodies out of your path as the person yelling behind you getting closer and going back into another hallway. Uh, straight again? Nope, right. Spikes. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> uh, left? Yep, they're still there. Where do I go? You dart to the right and continue towards the direction Alfred had run. Unable to think, you keep turning corners trying to flee from the madmen behind you until you and Alfred run into each other. As you both run into each other, you stop for a moment and turn to the room you both stood in front of for a, a moment to see a horrid sight. As you and Alfred run into each other, you turn to the open room beside you, frozen for a moment, as you both see the man from earlier slam someone's head into a table saw. The blood from the man's head splatters all over you and Alfred. The man, as well as the other spectators, quickly direct their attention towards you and Alfred. You and Alfred glance at each other before eyeing behind you both to see the accomplices getting very close. Alfred grabs your hand tightly and starts darting with you. You're making this very difficult, Cece. I'm so sorry. <laughs> you hear the man behind you that just brutally murdered someone say as he proceeded to dart after you along with his accomplice and the spectators he had in the room with him. Not knowing where Alfred is running to, your heart is beating out of your chest as you hear them chase you both. You and Alfred are beyond scared. Sprinting and panting along the hallway with Alfred following right behind you, you see a huge room ahead. Hold on a little longer, Alfred. You tell Alfred hoarsely as you gasp for breath with adrenaline from your fight or flight response kicking in. You near the huge room ahead and turn the corner to see a body shoot. Smiling, seeing it as an escape route, you grip Alfred's hand and dryly laugh, running to the body shoot to slide down it. Wouldn't that be like a, a pit? Wouldn't you think that would be like an, an inescapable pit if that's where they're putting their bodies? I don't think I personally would slide down the body slide. When you get close enough to the chute, you jump to slide down it, but feel Alfred's hand pull back as you hold it. You are yanked back from it and turn around to see a horrid sight. Oh no! You're a slippery little fucker, ain't you? You hear the white-haired man yell. Well, shit, where's Aaron Yeager when you need him? You aren't leaving here. The black-haired man shouts towards you as they both hold Alfred back with great force. Alfred struggles to get out of their grasp while you try to grab Alfred's arm and yank it in the opposite direction as you're holding on by a thread standing on the slippery slope of the chute. Trying to get on even ground to attack the twins, your footing kept messing up, almost making you lose your footing. You hope their grasp will loosen on Alfred as you won't let go of Alfred's hand. Let go of him! You scream towards the two. I mean, that's one way to do it! <laughs> you scream as you see the sight in front of you. Alfred cries and screams in audible sounds. Before you knew it, Alfred's arm is almost completely sawed off. The tendons and muscles are the only thing left holding it together. But from the weight of you trying to pull Alfred away from them, you accidentally help rip the tendons and muscles in his arm. You then fall down the body chute with Alfred's ripped off hand. This isn't the end. This is just the beginning, my doll. You hear the man with the chainsaw yell to you and laugh. Falling down the body chute, you scream and cry at the top of your lungs. Cece, you're safe. You hear the faint voice calling out for you, but you cover your ears as if you didn't hear it. Feeling as if your whole body is breaking into sweats, you start breathing heavier, but feel as if you can't catch your breath. No, 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 no.